Hello everyone, welcome to my channel. My name's Fran. In this channel, I share knowledge and practical techniques on trauma healing and everything about mental health. If it is something that you're interested in, please hit that subscribe button so that you get a notification every time I upload a video. In this video, I'm gonna continue talking about how to heal from abandonment fear. And this is the fifth video of a series of videos to work on core beliefs that cause us to get us stuck in abandonment anxiety. I have already published the first four videos. So the first core belief is on abandonment. So that you feel, you constantly feel like people are going to leave you no matter what. And the second one is on mistrust and abuse, meaning that you don't really trust other people that they have good intentions towards you. They either wanted to use you or hurt you. The third one is on emotional deprivation. And a lot of people have this core belief because fundamentally we don't believe that we deserve to be loved. And the fourth one is defectiveness. We believe that we cause the bad things because of the defectiveness of ourselves. And this is the final one. And this one is gonna be on failure. It's this pervasive feeling that we are never gonna be good enough compared to other people. We will never be smart or capable enough. Those core beliefs were originally brought out by Michelle Skin in her book, Love Me, Don't Leave Me. And under the guidance of my therapist, I worked on overcoming each and every one of those core beliefs. They have been very useful for reframing my thoughts, those negative um, perceptions that I have towards any situation or other people. That's why in this series of videos, I shared the workbook questions that I did and also the sample answers from mine so that it helps you better understand how to use it either by yourself or with the guidance from someone else. So let's jump right into it. Some thoughts on this core belief can be like, most of my peers are more successful than I am. I'm not as smart as other people in my life. I feel ashamed that I don't measure up to others. I don't possess any special talents. Maybe at a simple glance of those thoughts, you don't feel like you resonate with them. Even consciously, you feel like, well, I'm gonna do great things one day. But when we're talking about right this moment, what can you do? What plans can you have? And how can you take actions towards your goal? You feel like you're disabled to do anything you're immobilized because well there's some fear and some restrictions within yourself that's limiting you to take this move you feel like what if i fall well am i joking like if they don't make it how can i make it i'm not better than them they are so much better than me that's why they make it and deep down deep down it's this unconscious belief that you are not as capable you don't have any special talents make you or prove that you are the one that's going to make it. You don't believe that someone like you deserve or can be gifted with wonderful things and deserving things in your life. And it is this belief that contributes a lot to the thinking of someone might leaving you because you feel like you're not special enough to keep them. You're not deserving enough for others to consciously choose to stay in your life. That's why whenever you feel inadequate, whenever you feel I'm not capable, you automatically jump to the conclusion, well, that's why they wanted to leave me. That's why they don't want to stay in my life. And this can contribute a lot to your abandonment anxiety and abandonment fear. And it can easily get you triggered with this overwhelming sensation that well, you need to hold on to something. You need to make sure and make have a guarantee that things wouldn't go wrong. Maybe when you are presented with a choice to leave a relationship that's not working, you don't really feel that strongly. Like you cannot, you're not able to convince yourself, well, I'm good, I can find someone better. Basically, you don't believe it yourself. So there's no way that you can convince yourself strongly to make the conscious and right choice. All right, let's look at the workbook questions together on how to overcome this core belief. The first question is that, what are some specific standards you have set up for yourself in your life? Where do you think those standards come from? For this question, you can bring as many aspects of your life as possible so that you can actually look at those standards carefully and examine them, like how they are affecting the way you view yourself and if they're actually legitimate for you to adopt if they are beneficial to your life. The truth is that a lot of times we adopt and we internalize other people's standards 
as our own without even questioning it, without even questioning if it's serving us or hurting us. And we believe other people's truth. We set ourselves up for failure. The simple answers that I did was mainly on career and relationships because those two areas of my life, I feel like they've been hit the hardest by this core belief. Because this is very long, I'm not gonna read it through. I'm gonna put it up here. So if you're interested, you can pause and read it. The second question also serves the same purpose of helping you uh, carefully looking at the standards that you adopt. Are they actually true? Like, do you choose like voluntarily to believe those standards? I'm not here to argue that any of your success standards are wrong or bad for you. I'm just saying like, you need to be aware of them and make your own choices instead of just adopting them, maybe from your parents, from your teachers, from professors, from friends or anyone else. But if it's a standard that you actually consciously choosing to keep, then great, you can actually skip this question. The third question is, Reflect on specific past life events that make you feel like a failure. Are there alternative explanations to reframe that situation instead of sticking with the failure conclusion? Core beliefs can be cultivated in our adult life, but mostly it can be easily cultivated when we are children. When we are like unconsciously adopting the model from our parents, from our environment, because we don't, we're like a blank paper, right? We just take as people give us and we don't question it. And it's best to review those questions from a calm and centered grounded state because it allows you to see the images, the memories much more clearly than when you're in this chaotic state. So for me, I always set this ritual, like I go back to my room, I light up this candle and I turn down a little bit like meditative music so that it helps me remain calm to observe any past memories. It allows me to go into this younger state self um, when I try like, consciously to recall it. And this is my answer to this question. So when those traumatic events happen, maybe it's one single accident or maybe it's like repetitive emotional neglect, abuse, we often form a negative perception towards ourselves in a negative tone, like there's something wrong with me, I caused this situation, I must be so bad that they do this to me. What do we need to do to address is that we must be able to reframe that situation into a neutral or positive light so that we know that it's not against us. It's just happening to us. Like things happen, bad things happen. It does not reflect badly on us. So that in current event, we are allowed to be more grounded and to be more like an observer to be separated from that event to be separated from the negative conclusion and perception we have towards ourselves. The fourth one is to reflect on specific moments that make you feel proud and capable in each standard you listed above. In my other videos, I have repeatedly talked about how to beat shame. And the one thing to beat shame, to beat this identity, this negative identity we formed of ourselves, is to be proud of ourselves, is to recognize that we have this inner agency, we have this inner ability and strength to transform this negative events, to actually move on from it, to put an end to it, and we can create things, better things in our future. And that is the essential um, detachment from trauma because often when we feel like we're trapped in trauma, we feel like we're immobilized, we cannot do anything, we're helpless and hopeless. Also because we don't believe that the world is doing us good, we don't believe that people are having good intentions towards us, so that we feel even more trapped because we know like we cannot do anything and other people cannot do anything. So there's no way we can change this, we are stuck here forever. And this negative dialogue needs to be changed with positive experience, not just well, you try to recall a proud moment of something, but also to experience it in a body level, to stay with that experience, that positive narrative for a while. For example, if I'm trying to recall something that I did was maybe I get up today, I actually sit here and record this video. I spent three hours on it and I'm doing good for people that I care about. I want them to get better. So when I'm thinking about this, when I'm narrating this thing, I feel like my body's just trying to like straighten up instead of being this collapsed state. I feel like 
my eyes are getting more bigger because I'm really like smiling to the camera and really saying something that's exciting me. And I feel like my hands are a little bit trembling because I think it's out of excitement and also my voice becoming like firm and not that well like weak. So when I try to allow myself to stay in this positive experience, I'm remembering it. I'm also constantly reminding myself that I have the strength, I have this ability to be detached from negative things. And when you do this enough of times, your body will remember this. Your physiological state can be ordered out of repetition on this positive experience. When I consciously try to collect the success stories, the successful moments that I have on each area of my life so that whenever I have this negative thought strike me as like, you're not capable, you're a failure. I could probably stay and think, well, that's not quite true because last week I did this and that week before, she actually applauded me for doing the other thing so that your body wouldn't jump right into conclusion with your negative thought that you are not capable, you are a failure. And with this body posture, you can also be convinced that it's not that scary, it's not that terrifying, it's not that negative after all. And the fifth question is, how do you plan to improve yourself in your most valued standards? And you need specific steps or timelines for this. Oftentimes when we feel like we're not capable of doing something, we are a failure, it's because we are trapped in our head, we're not getting touch with reality, we're not getting the actual feedback, either negative or positive ones, to modify it, to take actions. Normally what we do is that we would avoid, we would retrieve, we would withdraw from reality. So when we avoid, it accelerates our fear towards taking actions and it further traps us, just building a negative loop. But if we are willing to get in touch with reality, to set specific steps by setting intentions into doing something with a specific timeline, and when we actually finish it, when we actually accomplish it, we're building up our self-esteem. You start to build this relationship with the process with the actual world. You also are reminding yourself that you deserve something great when you're trying to take actions towards something valuable that you want out of life. Another thing is that when we are traumatized, we often don't believe that we have the ability to tolerate hard stuff. We don't believe that we're able to endure through like difficult situations because we feel like we have been overwhelmed, we know how scary it is, and we will never put ourselves into that vulnerable position ever. We are not patient enough to really plant seeds towards the goal. One thing that helped me personally in building um, confidence in the field of career is that I actually list out specific step and timeline. Well, maybe this year I wanted to achieve, like I wanted to contribute like 100 videos and I'm gonna do this over a 12 month. And every month at this specific day, like Wednesday or Thursday, I'm gonna post two videos at 12 a.m. So then now I have a more positive light when I'm talking about myself because I know that I'm someone who does things exactly what she said. All right, everyone, I hope this video is helpful. If you like it, please give it a thumbs up. If you wanted to see more videos like this, please subscribe, and I'll see you next time. Bye-bye.